Namaskar Mahesh Kuji. Uh, my name is Vadim. Namaskar. My question is regarding unexpressed or even suppressed sexual energy. I think I need a bit more clarity regarding the way to transform, to transmute this energy into love. As far as I remember, you told that this energy slightly goes up and then goes out as love. From my experience of holding this sexual energy inside, physically, I mean, after a while, indeed, I feel something like a growth of um, energy, clarity. I need less sleep and I feel more strong and like more focused and stuff. But after a certain point, it starts to get a bit overwhelming and difficult for me to manage. Anger, so in my case, it's rather overexcitement, like, you know, I had five coffees in a row or something. The mind becomes like too much disturbed. The symptoms are pretty much like the disturbed Kundalini. I feel easier when I just physically let this sexual energy out. In most cases, honestly, it feels like a relief. It's kind of like a get rid of some stagnant energy. When I don't do it at this particular moment, when I do it a bit later on, then it's the opposite thing. I feel like sucked out and super exhausted. So, um, the question is, what is your general advice on dealing with the sexual energy? And in particular, what are the risks of not expressing it in the proper moment? Firstly, it depends on what your general interest or calling in life is. For example, if you are a grihastha, if you are somebody who is leading a family life, has a partner, has children, living the life of a grihastha, there's a very different approach to the whole issue with sexuality. Or if you're a monk, then it's a different story. The problem starts there in that you are neither a monk nor are you living as a family man. So you're already in a state of confusion. In most ancient societies, there was clarity about these things because of exactly this reason. So while you are experimenting with the, with the virya shakti, it's the shakti of that entire uh, force of sexuality, you know. You are experimenting with it, but your social circumstance is not clear. So first one has to put clarity in that. But because it's not clear and because you can't put clarity into it in one or two days, whatever happens, if there is a feeling in the system to hold back and not to release, then, and this holds for male as well as female, there's no difference in that, actually, because both have the same kind of shakti in a different form. If you have that need to hold back, then there is something in your system which is understanding that there is a force there which you can actually instrumentalize, let's say. But what are you instrumentalizing this shakti for? That you don't know. If you want to be somebody who is able to transmute this energy, you don't want to release it, you want to transmute it. The transmutation of that energy means you actually pull up that shakti into the heart area and you release it outward as a force of love, meaning that instead of that shakti being in the lower chakras where they have a different function, let's say a function of pleasure, a function of uh, uh, reproduction, that force gets pulled up and it gets transmuted into a larger unity consciousness, love 
energy flowing outward to all. So, if you consciously do that, you won't feel that pressure, that energetic pressure, it's an energetic pressure that the system cannot hold it. There's no Sahan Shakti built up, you don't have the force, the strength to hold that energy within your system. That is because this practice is not undertaken. So if you undertake this practice, then gradually what happens is you train the system to pull up the Shakti and to expel it in a sense, you can say. It's a bit violent as a word, but it goes out as love to everyone. And people who have that, they have a, they have a certain vibration about them. You can see that this person is not shaken by the sexual energy, they just, you can know it. You can see a person, you know, immediately, is this person shaken by that energy or not, you know? When I say shaken, what I mean is, are they victims of that energy or are they the masters of that energy? That you can see quite clearly in a person, when you see them. Because they have the ability, if they transmute it, to really be sources of love to, to lots of people around them. The question is, what do you want to do with this thing, with this body that is here called Vadim, what do you want to do with it? There is a choice you can make. It's not that everything is already written down on your forehead and you have to go that route. It is both. It is predestined and it is created in every moment. So what is it that you want to do with it? Are you an experimental spiritual seeker, that's also a way to live. Then if you want to transmute that energy, you learn how to pull it up and transmute it. And I also want to say one thing that the virya, it has two components. It has, on the one hand, the energetic, purely energetic component, which is also material in nature, which is more towards the energy side of the spectrum, and then it has the very materiality, the actual material thing. What is very uh, interesting is that if you, are, if you train yourself to pull this energy up and to transmute it, because if you don't do that, it will, it will go into aberrations, either mental aberrations or physical aberrations, like physical illnesses, mental disturbances, as you also brought up, uh, emotional uh, aberration, strange emotional behavior, if you don't transmute it, right? When you transmute it, there are two things that also happen. One is the materiality has to find its expression somewhere. And what has been observed over the years with people who have undertaken these practices is that that materiality of the, the virya is expelled through the nose. It comes out through the nose. And the shakti element is transmuted and expressed as love through the heart chakra, coming out like that. So if you are able to hold and experiment and go through that, then you will find out these things and then you become, of course, a source of love to everyone. The other way is, of course, to expel it and, and, and keep that energy under control in the system. But it has its negative sides as well. So it's a choice that you make. If you are a, if you are a grihasti, as a male, you have a certain sexual activity that you perform over that period of time or, or that, you, that you experience. Perform is not a good word in that context, but you experience it then, of course, you don't have this kind of build-up of pressure in the system. So it's a, it's a choice you have to make as to what you actually want. What does this thing want in this life? Or what does it feel it is drawn towards? Or what is its, 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 uh, its calling, you know? And all these actions go hand in hand. Uh, but till the choice is not really made, what to do with this energy? Well, it depends. Do you want to continue to experience it in this way or do you want to try to transmute it? You know, to actually pull it up and transmute it and express it as love. 
what is your interest? Because, you know, the spiritual path is always a matter of uh, propensity and interest also. Some people are not interested in that aspect, they're more interested in the self-observation aspect or in, in, in surrender aspect and self-realization. And others, they spend a lot of time focusing on the sexuality and seeing how that energy can be manipulated or also transmuted. So it is also a matter of your personal interest. Where does your interest lie, you know? If it lies in the area of transmutation of sexual energy, then that's what you'll focus on in surrender. Samarpan is, is non-negotiable. Always in surrender, deep, deep surrender, and if possible, to actually go with the truth of the being. Because the sexual experience is like a... You know, the pleasure of a sexual experience is like a small glimpse in the in that chakra, let's say, of what actually happens when you go into oneness experience, when you go into a unity consciousness experience. It's like a small glimpse of it. So once you've had the glimpse hundred times, after that, how many more glimpses? And the interesting part is that in even say fifty or even hundred years ago, here in the Indian subcontinent, as per the Kama Shastra, as per the Anangaranga, as per many of the uh, Shastras written about all this, the general population, the male population was not there releasing whatever they were producing uh, on a daily basis like it's happening now. They held back that Virya Shakti, because it gave them strength, it gave them power as men to operate with that extremely demanding creature called a woman. Which is the reason why men can't really handle this creature anymore. Because if they're continuously releasing the Virya Shakti, how are they supposed to deal with that thing which is in front of them, that is so demanding, that is so inordinately uh, expecting of constant uh, service on all, in all areas. The only way men were able to maintain that, that power equation with females was that they held the Virya Shakti in. They satisfied the female but didn't give in, in terms of release. This is what uh, uh, anyone with any sense in their brains, any man would know, or at least try to in implement. What do they do with that energy? Then they, they transmute it. So it is a decision to take up living like that. Or you go there and you release every second day and then you're a softy and that's okay also. It's a decision every man has to make. What the women have to do is a separate issue. So holding the Virya Shakti, transmuting it, expressing it as love to the world around you and concurrently being able to actually maintain a a, a, a sexual uh, life, if that is what is interesting for you, that should be the, the way you can somehow function now, until you make up your mind to uh, take up either being a monk or being a grihasti. There's nothing in between. That's all woke stuff which is not going to last very long because there won't be any men around if things go on like this for another hundred years or fifty years. It's a decision, it's a very strict, concrete decision you can take. You can control it, it's in your body, it's not in her body. You can train yourself. And also, as you yourself said, that clarity in thought, that, that uh, you know, clarity, general clarity about everything, the strength, the energy, everything just increases. Why would someone want to release that energy all the time? <coughs> you see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. My question was also about the risks. If the system is not really ready to manage this like intensity, uh, maybe the system is just not ready right now. I'm yes, you quite... can. It's, it's like you train yourself gradually. You can't do it all in one day, you know. First you have to learn how to pull that, that Shakti upward to the heart and to release it, right? 
So you take time, you, you, you practice, you slowly develop into that. It won't happen in a day. And the risks are, the risks are only if the energy is not transmuted. So either it's released or it's transmitted. Then there is no risk of any mental illness or aberrations, emotional aberrations. But I don't truly think it's either transmuted or released. If it's suppressed, there's, I think, a third option, which is the most like negative one. Let's suppressed say. is not possible. Suppressing it is not possible. That is dangerous. Either you transmute it or you release mm -hmm. it. You cannot suppress. If you suppress it, then those are the dangers I mentioned before. It's either mental, like you start to actually become strange, mentally, you're not able to put together logical thought processes, rational processes which are necessary for living. You're not able to do that anymore, gradually. People who suppress because they think they're transmuting, but they're not, you know. You feel it when you're transmuting this energy, you can feel it, you don't have to do some grandiose courses in tantric, I don't know what. It's all not necessary because you can feel the force rising in the system. You practice, you sit quietly and make it, make it move up and express it outward. And then you are safe. And if you feel the build-up is too much, you release, and then you train yourself more and more to be in that state of... The question is that, are you ready to even express love at all? That is the thing, that fear of expressing <clears throat> of expressing love, and I mean it in a general sense to the whole world, is, is something you first have to get over also, you know? Because you take yourself too seriously. You don't have to take yourself too seriously. You have to be in surrender, bend, bend. The more you take yourself seriously, the more the ego is at play. The more you're bending with a sweet smile and surrender going, then that thing will rise and love can come out of the heart, basically. The heart opens then, you know. The issue of taking yourself too seriously has to be also looked at. I mean, I'm just saying this not to put you down at all, but it is something to look at, you know. Yes, I agree. Oh, I'm very grateful that you agree, as an exception. <laughs> this time you didn't say but. It's not something so heavy. See, a spiritual seeker has to be an experimentalist, has to check this, try this, try that. And that's the joy of being a spiritual seeker, otherwise it would be boring if you sat there the whole day like this. I mean, some people do it, but spiritual seeking is active and it's vibrant and it's dynamic. It's not some haloed beings that are floating above the Ganga. So, you are well on your way to finding yourself, but this taking yourself too seriously and also being afraid of just being natural and expressing love to the other, all that has to come now, you know? It's been some years, right? I don't think you need to fear those dangers, though. I think you know the difference between suppressing the energy, transmuting it, and releasing it. I think you're smart enough for that. Still. <laughs> it shouldn't be that that intelligence starts to reduce because you're making some mistakes in this department. I told you it's better to just get a partner and have some children. Then that takes care of everything. The woman will be there every day, ensuring that you have no energy left at the end of the day. <laughs> and then everything will be fine. You would make a good father, Vadim, why don't you attempt it? No? We'll see. I mean, you don't look like monk material to me, so... But one never knows, you know, one never knows. But yes, on a serious note, it's transmute, make that attempt to transmute, and if it doesn't work, if there's a build-up release, again, transmute. It's a matter of practice. For a spiritual seeker, it's always experiment and see what happens, 